the EEV Vlog. I'm your host, Dave Jones. And yes, I'm now available in glorious high definition. Why on earth you'd want to see this ugly mug in high definition is beyond me, but anyway, I've got a new high definition camcorder. It beats the pants off the old standard de definition DV camcorder I used to use, and this is a new uh, Sanyo Exacti or something they call it, a HD 1010. It's a it's not the super duper latest model, but anyway, it shoots, it's pretty impressive. It shoots full HD, and uh, well, I'm not actually shooting in full HD, that's pretty silly, but I'm shooting in uh, 1280 by 720 now, so this is really cool. And I've only just started using it, so, you know, if things look a bit silly, if my colour looks a bit off, or my, you know, face looks a bit screwy, or whatever, or it's out of focus, or the sound's crap, or whatever, well, you know, I'll probably fix it by the next vlog, so here we go. Now, usually the first thing I do when I get a new product is I take it apart. But, you know, it, these consumer goods, they're really difficult to take apart. I can't even see any damn screws on the thing, so I'm not going to take it apart. But I'm going to have a look at the base. Let's have a look at the base on this thing. It's one of these, um, I'll put up a photo of it because I can't film itself, but uh, it's one of these gun style uh, camcorders. And, of course, all the interfaces on it go through a docking station like this. It's got this high-density connector. Let me test and focus on my new camera. Oh, look at that. Isn't that magic? Anyway, it's got this new high-density connector in there. And, way how fast does the focus come back? There you go. Let's test this sucker out. And it's got face tracking. I can, like, see, like, a little box that tracks my face around. And keep me in focus. Mm should blur it a bit. I'm not that good to look at. Anyway, um, one, you know, a product trait that really ticks me off again. The idiots have put on, this is the back of the dock, they've put on a non-standard USB connector. Look at it. They've got a standard HDMI connector. They've got a, a 2.5, you know, a, a DC jack for the power and stuff like that. And some other one I've, I've seen somewhere else for the composite. But they've used a custom USB connector. Sure, they provide your cable that, that goes into the USB, but why? Why can't they just put a mini B connector on there? Oh. And check out the manual I got with it too. It's one of these thick, really thick manuals. It's got a couple of hundred pages, and you think, okay, it's in 10 or 20 languages. No, this is the English manual all the way through. English. The whole thing. A couple hundred pages. What a great manual! Whoa, thumbs up! Some people do it right. And here you go. Due to unprecedented demand, I present to you Damocles the Flying Pig. Yes, this is a real, actual flying pig. Would you believe it or not? And I bought him out for the inaugural EEV Blog Flying Pig Award. And I'm going to award it to the first recipient, and you probably guessed it. Yep, it's Microchip. Microchip are the winners of the Flying Pig Award. All my regular viewers will have actually seen uh, the response to my previous Microchip uh, blog where I reviewed the PicKit 3 Debugger Programmer. And I, I really quite I slagged it off, and I thought deservedly so. As it turns out, I missed out on a few... Uh, important things which um, Microchip corrected me on. But the amazing thing is, this video made it all around Microchip, and instead of getting their, instead of uh, a deathly silence or something like that, or getting their army of lawyers to send me a letter, cease and, cease and desist, no, they actually, um, I got a phone call from the Microchip CEO himself, the head honcho, Steve Sangy. Unbelievable. Video blogger like me in Sydney, he slags off their product. What do I do? I get a phone call from the CEO thanking me for the blog and thanking me for raising the issues. And what do you know? They're working on them. Uh, you know, the verdict's still out, but they have, uh, they're, they're taking the right steps. And they posted a hilarious video response to my video. It's fantastic. It's on my page. Check it out. It really is incredible that a multi-billion dollar, huge corporation like Microchip Technologies would actually care about what someone like me says in my blog. And the blog's not that popular yet, hopefully, but they listened and they responded, and it's absolutely incredible that um, 
a company like this understands uh, the power of the new social uh, media, social networking and things like that. They value it as, as very important and they take uh, customer uh, things like this very seriously. So thumbs up, two thumbs up to Microchip, Steve Sangy and all the guys there and, and girls. And uh, Steve Sangy and I actually uh, talked at some length for like half an hour or something like that. And I just wanted to pass on a few things um, which we uh, talked about. The first thing is is that a lot of you uh, might know that Microchip have just bought uh, high-tech uh, software. They're, they're an Australian company and they sell, um, they've been going for like 20 years or something and they sell really top class, in fact the best I, I think, um, C compilers for PIX and, and various other products as well. And Microchip just bought them out. And, and I know that there's been a lot of talk on the forums and people are quite concerned that Microchip were actually going to kill off, uh, either kill off the products or ruin them or something like that. But um, uh, Steve, the CEO, assures me that this is not the case. They actually bought them because they realise that they're a really top quality uh, compiler. They're the best in best in the business and they don't want and they wanted them all to themselves and they have absolutely no plans to um, to change anything or to uh, you know ruin it or bury the product or anything like that they want it to be their um, you know their top class compilers but they have uh, understandably dropped support for all the other manufacturers because they can't own a company that you know writes compilers for other manufacturers of course but that's all right but rest assured they're not going to kill it now the other things we talked about were uh, how bad the industry is at the moment and all these micro, all the other micro con microcontroller companies are actually doing very badly like um, Atmel uh, for example, I've known this for quite a long time, that they, that they haven't made a cent from day one, they're a totally unprofitable business and well you know in the, wrong, in the long run they're probably you know, unless they change their way of doing things or get bought out by somebody else, they're probably not going to survive. And uh, Microchip did actually try to buy Atmel, but that actually fell through because the Atmel people, they actually resisted it and all that sort of stuff, which is, you know, may, may be fair enough. But, um, yeah, and a lot of the other players out there, um, all of, in fact, all the major players, their uh, microcontroller um, businesses aren't doing very well at all. They're doing very poorly with the global financial crisis and just, just the way the market's running and things like that. And, well, Microchip are really the um, standout, standout performers in the bunch. So, you know, their future's really looking good. So check out their products next time. The thing is Microchip's 32-bit parts. As you probably know, uh, the most popular 32-bit um, architecture on the market now is, is ARM. ARM is just everywhere. It's in everything. It's like a plague. And uh, Microchip, uh, Steve in, in particular, he um, views the ARM architecture as, as a bit of a commodity. And really, I, I think he's right. And they didn't want to get into a commodity uh, type of thing. So that's why they didn't, they haven't released any ARM products. So instead, um, for their 32-bit solution, they chose the MIPS uh, 4K architecture. So if you look at the PIC32 um, family, which is their new 32-bit processors, they're quite good. I'm actually going to use it in my new Mark II microwatch. Uh, so they do actually look really good. And they use the MIPS 4K core, um, which is I don't know, it's probably the second most popular 32-bit uh, architecture out there, I think. And they're pretty good, so check them out. And I'm not kidding, this is a real, actual, flying pig. This is Damocles. We used to have him at my former company, and we used to bring him out and make him fly every time a project worked or something miraculous happened within the organisation that we couldn't believe. Pigs might fly, as they say. And Damocles actually does. Look, I'm not kidding, this is actually a real, fair income. Flying pig! Watch this! Oh, jeez!